Antibiotic beads can be created by the surgeon for use for treatment of osteomyelitis, soft tissue infection, or even management of dead space. Each unit of cement is 40 grams and the maximum antibiotic you can mix with this is 8 grams. Biomechanic studies show that the strength of the cement declines if you use more than 2 grams per unit. You also find that most commercially available antibiotic impregnated cements actually have 1 gram per 40 grams of cement. In this case, the patient has a lower extremity soft tissue infection, which is requiring the use of antibiotic impregnated beads. At this point, we have mixed both the powder as well as monomer together along with the antibiotics. In this instance, I used 3.6 grams of tobermycin along with 2 grams of vancomycin, which were selected according to the sensitivity of the infection. You'll also notice we're mixing by hand. The reason we're doing this is that this increases the porosity of the cement and helps the elution characteristics. The elution characteristics are also helped by using two antibiotics instead of one. Prolonged mixing is sometimes needed, especially with high doses of antibiotics, as this tends to take a long time to liquefy. This is a commercially available system to make antibiotic beads. Basically, this is a flexible rubber type material with holes that are filled with the cement. Once all the holes are filled, excess cement is removed in order to minimize need for cleanup after this is compressed. Typically non-absorbable suture is utilized in the string holes here to set in the cement. The reason this is used is this allows for easier removal later as all the cement balls will be tethered together. However, in this instance I'm using large gauge antibiotic covered vicryl suture which is absorbable. We then top this off with a small amount of additional cement to make sure the sutures are in place as well as to ensure that all of the holes are properly filled with cement. The top of the device is then placed into position and compressed. Uh, we do this manually first and then use any available tray to set on this to hold this down in position and provide compression. After it appears the cement is fully cured, this is evaluated. What we do is take up some of the extra cement from the side. If this is still malleable and flexible, the cement is not fully cured. We let this sit for several additional minutes to let the cement balls fully harden. Once they're at this stage, they can come out fairly easily by simply flexing the rubber as well as pulling on the suture. Here's the first one of our bead strings being lovingly modeled. Oftentimes we make these concurrent to the formal debridement. We do this to minimize operative time. These beads can be made by any surgical assistant or other surgeon available. The sutures on the end can be trimmed if desired. Often one end is left long to facilitate removal at a later date. So remember that anything more than two grams of antibiotics per unit decreases your strength of your final product and you can use a maximum of eight grams of antibiotic per unit. Using two antibiotics together improves your elution characteristics. This is also improved by using palico cement which has improved porosity. Hand mixing also improves this.